My name is Mr. Kessler and this is part one of my video density series. This part is entitled, What is Density? In order to start talking about density, we have to have some background information. And most of you guys have had this information presented to you in elementary school, but I want to go ahead and go through a couple of key terms that you should already know. The first one is mass. And mass is a measurement of the amount of matter something contains. It's typically measured in grams. Uh, we use the triple beam balance, the tool, to measure the mass of an object. The other term we need to understand is volume. And volume is the amount of space that an object or a substance occupies. It's typically measured in cubic centimeters or in milliliters. Now, this little three right here, you may not have seen that before. That is, uh, that means cubed. Sometimes you'll see a little two there and that means squared. It basically means you're gonna multiply it by itself three times. Okay, so if you understand mass and volume, density should be a pretty easy topic for you to understand. Okay, density is a comparison of how much matter there is in a certain amount of space. And it's a ratio of mass and volume. And all that ratio means is if mass or volume were to change, the density would also change. And lastly, density is a physical property of matter. It is used to describe matter. We talked about physical properties when we talked about metals, nonmetals, and metalloids. Well, density is also a physical property of all matter. Um, scientists use density to determine what kind of element something is, what kind of mineral something is, what kind of, uh, you know, just object something is. When, it, when they have a piece of gold or a piece of pyrite, they can measure the density to see if it's gold or if it's fool's gold. If you have, gold has a specific density, and if it doesn't come up correct, then you know you have a piece of fool's gold. Okay, so we have box A and box B here. In box A, we have little pieces of matter inside. And these little black dots represent pieces of matter or maybe uh, atoms. Now, it, if it did represent atoms, obviously we wouldn't be able to see it. So let's just call it little pieces of matter. Box A has only about six pieces of matter in it, but box B without really adding it up, has about, I don't know, it looks like about 20 pieces of matter. Box A and box B are the exact same size, but box B's matter is more tightly compacted together. And so therefore, we would say that box B is more dense than box A. You can see that right down here. Box A is less dense, box B is more dense. The matter inside this box is packed more tightly together than in box B. A. Okay. Density has a formula, a mathematical formula that we can f calculate. So this is it right here. Density equals mass divided by volume. This line here represents divided by. Okay. It's not addition, subtraction. It's divided. So mass divided by volume is density. So if we have two of the these three things, we can calculate what the other third thing is. You may also see it written like this. D equals M over V. Now, this formula is going to be given to you on any test you take, and including the star test. But it's also important to remember it. And there's an easy way to remember it. I call it the I heart density, or I love density. Okay, this is how you can remember this formula. Mass over volume goes inside your little heart here. If you know how to draw a heart, then you can remember which one goes on top. And you can remember it this way. This is the trick, so pay close attention. The top of the heart makes an M. You can see I'm drawing my pen over the M. That makes an M, and mass starts with M. And then the volume, the bottom of the heart, makes a V. Bottom part makes a V right here. So if you can remember how to draw a heart, you should easily be able to remember that the formula is, for density, is mass divided by volume. All right, let's work a sample problem here. 
So this is a sample problem that you could see on a test. It says, a small rock has a mass of 15 grams and a volume of three cubic centimeters. What's the density of the rock? Okay, we have the information that we need. We have mass right here, 15 grams, and volume, three cubic centimeters. So let's start filling out um, our formula. Okay, we know the formula copied from the last page is D equals mass over volume. Density equals mass over volume. If it helps you to draw out the heart on every single problem on your paper, or on your test, then do that. I think that's a great idea. Once you get the formula written down, you then want to substitute the words for the actual numbers. So for example, mass is on the top. Well, we need to go up to the problem and find the mass. Mass is right here. It's 15 grams. So we substitute 15 grams in for mass. And then we need to put volume on the bottom. That's volume of three cubic centimeters. Then we'll put it right down here. Now it just becomes a fraction. 15 grams over three cubic centimeters. This is a division problem right here. Now I talked to your math teachers and this is how they told me that you guys calculate a division problem from a fraction. You want to put the top dog in the house. Let me show you what that looks like. Okay, Here's your little house right here, division problem, and you put the top dog, the 15 grams, inside the house. For density problems, the mass will always go on the inside. Okay, And then we have to solve. 3 goes into 15 five times. 5 times 15 is 15. We subtract that out, get 0. So we don't have any remainder, any decimal. And this is our answer right here, 5. All right. But we're not done yet. We have D equals 5. We're not quite done yet. If you were to turn your paper in or your test in and you just put D equals 5, you're not going to get full credit. You have to use the unit of measurement in science. And the unit of measurement for a density problem, you're going to have to go back to your problem to see what the unit of measurement is. In this case, we go back to our heart and we see that it's grams per centimeter cubed. It's a relationship between the mass and the volume. So the answer would then be density equals 5 grams per centimeters cubed. Now if you were measuring an irregular shaped object, it could be grams per milliliter. But in this case, it's grams per centimeter cubed. And that would be your answer. Density equals 5 grams per centimeter cubed. Now you're asking yourself, Okay, I can do that, but why, why does it matter? I don't understand, you know, who, who cares about any of this stuff? Well, let me show you why you would care about this. Okay, the density of water is actually 1.0 grams per centimeters cubed, or gram per cubic centimeters. And it turns out that if an object has a density of less than 1 gram per centimeter cubed, then it floats it's less dense than water. So if it has a number right here that's less than 1, 0 0.9, 0 0.8, 0 0.5, anything less than 1, it's going to float. If it has a density greater than 1.0, then it's going to sink. You can see this picture over here. A Diet Coke can and a regular Coke can have the same volume. It's the same exact can with the same amount of fluid in it same amount of liquid. The difference is they have different masses. The mass of the Diet Coke is less than the mass of the Coke because it has sh less sugar in it. So the actual Coke sinks while a Diet Coke floats. Diet Coke is less dense than water and a regular Coke is more dense than water. So that's really it. When we get into minerals, um, We'll talk more about density because scientists use density to also determine what kind of mineral something is. But that's it. If you understand this, then you can do density problems given mass and volume. Thanks for listening.